Hey Aquarius, this is your general reading for Aquarius Sun, Moon and Ascendant or Rising Sign for the month of February. So Aquarius, <coughs> fanfare please, drum rolls, Brrr. happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Aquarius. Let the choir sing. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Aquarius, and welcome to Aquarius season. And belated happy birthday to the January Aquarians. This is it, my love. This is where you get your moment to shine, where you get to show yourself off. Yes, there's two cards hop out there. Yeah, this is your first birthday card, the tower, but it's a good one because beside that is the Wheel of Fortune. And I'll be able to explain that. No panic, don't panic when you see the tower. It's not bad. Anyway, so what's been going on? We know that there was the big lunar eclipse happening for you in, cards are hopping out, yeah, in the seventh house. So that was a Leo lunar eclipse. It happened at the end of January in the seventh house where there could have been a moment, Aquarius, where your relationships with other people, your partner, close friends, business partners, people in general, people who you trust in some way, shape or form, could have all gotten a bit weird. There could have been some strange things happening, strange conversations, maybe even some tension or even aggression. And for some of you, those of you in a relationship, it, it could have really marked a moment where you could have said, I don't need this shit in my life anymore. Uh, I mean, it's all about you, what you want, your needs. You want everything your way, you want. And I've gone along with this and it has hurt my pride and it has hurt my sense of self-esteem in some way. And in some way also, it's made me feel that I, I haven't been brave enough to just come out and tell you that it's not all about you. <laughs> yeah, so there could have been that real moment where... There was an element of selfishness that had to be redressed, rebalanced, put right again. Now, Aquarius, as good and wonderful as you are, and you know I think you are, you have Uranus in uh, Aries, in your house of communication. So when you saw all of this, whatever situation it was, pan out in your relationships, you could have jumped in and been a bit aggressive, more aggressive than usual. And that probably just felt like it was adding gasoline to a fire. Uh, there could have been a lot of hurt feelings, you know, a lot of people taking sulks and taking pouts and slamming doors and, you know, slamming phone. Oh, bring back the old phones that you could slam down. Really bring them back. It's not quite the same to just go, mm. <laughs> we need those big fake like phones, the big plastic phones that, bum, bye. <laughs> But there was an element of that. Now I know for some of you this could mark a very difficult period where a relationship might have run its course and you knew it, it was coming, you knew it and it just karmically closes a chapter there. So um, know that this was the right thing to happen. And I'm, I mean for some of you if there was that animosity or if something felt like it ended but yet it's not finished you know, there's lovely energy in February for you to maybe bring some of that back into balance, but not doing it the old way. You see, that's very important. That's what got you feeling all hurt and where your pride was wounded and where you didn't have any great identity in the relationship. Um, there's an opportunity to start again, if that's what you both want, and to fix this with a greater sense of love, with a greater sense of balance. There was something very imbalanced in the relationship and it's got to be put right. Now, seventh house is also where there's contracts. For some of you, if you've been waiting on a contract to end or a, a legal contract, a marriage contract to come to an end, you could have seen that happen over the end of January, maybe start of February. It could have happened for you. And that's a good thing. I know we got this as the opening card. It might feel right now, Aquarius, like... It's all a disaster. I don't know, do some of you follow me on Instagram? You've seen the post I put up about the tower card? Yeah, I mean, it looks like a disaster, but really let that shit fall. Let it fall because something better is trying to emerge underneath that. 
something purer, something more you is trying to express itself and evolve. And you've got to be the big bulldozer here and allow what must fall, fall. Yeah, so you can start over, start over with better with a better sense of ownership of your identity and relationships too. Now, the other thing about this is, this is a real moment where you suddenly enter into a new period of not giving an absolute crap about how other people perceive you. Generally, Aquarius, you're quite good. You don't really let other people shape you, mold you, dictate who you ought to be. But there has been a period where you found yourself going down that avenue where you are probably very dependent on somebody telling you that you're doing a good job. Maybe a crowd of people, people in work, an audience for those of you who do public speaking or something in the public. Maybe you got surprised at yourself at how dependent you were on their approval. And you're saying, how did that happen? How did my sense of pride, my sense of being able to shine, being able to feel confident and brave, how did that all fall on the approval of other people? How did I lose myself to that shit? Well, the good news, Aquarius, for your birthday month, you're reclaiming that. And the new is coming after the old is being broken. You have the sun, the big solar royal sun, coming to your birthday party. It is shining in the house of Aquarius. So you have the real big guns here shining in. And what it is, it's your soul now wants to do the first house things. And that is to change up your uh, looks a little bit. You know, it could be something very simple, just changing your hair, changing your clothes. Uh, but there's an element of having more pride in how you look. There could have been a moment where you've been going along and dressing like everybody else, following fashion, following style. And you're saying, that is not me. I book trends. I don't follow trends. Maybe you found yourself constantly wearing clothes that, you know, are representative of a sports team or your favorite band or movie or something. And you're saying, that is, how did I become the very thing I don't like, which is to be one of the sheep following en masse something, even though it might be a wonderful idea. You're saying, how did I fall for that shit? I'm always supposed to be an individual. I'm always supposed to be the one who sees the future before everybody else. Then why am I so stuck in, in appearance-wise, in the things that I surround myself with in my environment? How did that get all so same old, same old, stuck in a groove? Some of you might have found yourself really neglecting your appearance, finding that old comfortable sweater and just throwing that on at every opportunity and ignoring all the wonderful clothes that you have maybe in your wardrobe and just wearing things with holes in them. <laughs> I know sometimes, Aquarius, you do that. When you're not feeling right in yourself, your appearance can very often take a bit of a dive. So it's a bit of a meter, a bit of a gauge how to tell when Aquarius is really not happy. It's when you're not being your usual fantastic out there self showing off your qualities in some way so the sun is fixing that it's coming in to heal you to change up your appearance change up your first impressions you see maybe for a while you thought first impressions don't count it's what you've got going on in your soul now that is absolutely a fact if you can let your soul shine out and that's the first impression you're making, then that is fact. But the big questions you have now is Mercury and the Sun are in the first house is, do I need to think about this? If I'm wearing kind of very casual clothes that don't say much about me, am I still able to beam out my best qualities? Is that the first impression I'm giving? So it's a real start of the month moment where you're saying, I'm going to beam out the best of me. Beam me up to the best of me. Absolutely. Inside and out. So the first impression that you give people, I mean, it'll be so bright that they have to wear shades. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be the one sparkling and twinkling this month, my love. Damn right. And you need it now. You need it. Separate yourself from 
other people who may have been also open adversaries to you, people who were openly criticizing you, and you're saying, where did these people get the neck? Where did they get the, the, the kind of bully vibe? I mean, I'm here minding my own business. What gives you the right to come in and openly antagonize me? So there could be a real moment again where you have to re-examine how you present yourself to people, not to be somebody who fits in or somebody that they like, but instead somebody who means business. When you, look, when you stand out, you can say, look at this, I dare you, I dare you to say something because there's nothing you can say. You can shut your mouth. <laughs> it's a bit like that, a bit like that. Yeah, and with Uranus and Aries, he's the one that will really dare people. I dare you to say it, I dare you. <laughs> so there's all that energy going on, you're feeling the vibe, yeah. Now, other things that are going on, February 3rd, Venus, the goddess of love, going into Capricorn, into your 12th house. So, marks a few things. Firstly, when it comes to love, some of you could really now, after the lunar eclipse, be absolutely examining and re-indulging in what it means to be in a relationship, perhaps, that is very strong and karmic and unconditional love, that real flow of heart energy. You know, as we're going into the season where it's Valentine's Day and you're saying, look at those fools buying commercial cards, commercial roses, doing the same old, same old. Really, could this, could this not be a real month where you actually really do something special that flows from your heart? Does that not mean more than some cheap crap card from you know, a petrol station, a gasoline station, you know? So it's, your mind is on that, and Venus wants you to explore that. Now, for some of you with Venus in the 12th house, yes, there could be a moment where some of you have said goodbye to a relationship, we spoke about it, but this is a moment where you're going deep into yourself and bringing back that self-love, acknowledging maybe a loss in love, and kind of having that little grieving moment about it, but then re-engaging with, well, you know what? After this moment, after the tower moment, I really actually love myself a whole lot more than I have in a long time. So that's really nice. Now, for others, 12th house could represent secret loves. Yes, hidden loves. Loves that you want to keep to yourself. You don't want any people interfering with it. This is your special quiet place. You want special quiet love where you're away from the world, where it's not touched by any criticisms or, or real world things. You want that otherworldly love, something hidden, something deep, and maybe even something secret. Yeah, so that's the thing. Now, Venus is also the goddess of money. So Aquarius, be extra vigilant with your coins this month. I don't want you falling for somebody selling snake oil. And I certainly don't want you falling for any schemes that are presented in a kind of secret way. You've got to get in. This is only for a few people. We're telling nobody this. Get in on this before we tell everybody type of thing. Don't fall for that. This is not the month for that. Because you may not see your money ever again. It could be a month also where... People might come to you with sob stories and you're feeling all that love in the 12th house, but some of the sob stories could be about losing money and you might say, oh, I cannot have this. I Take my money. Take the world will be right again. I know you're saying that doesn't even sound like me. You just wait. Wait till Venus goes into the 12th house. That's her vibe. She wants to love expansively and with a great sense of purity and you which means as I said be cautious because you could be attracting people who might want to take advantage of that so the best use of this energy with Venus in the 12th is to really fall in love with the mystic side of life with your spirituality with your meditation with your healing with your rest with taking your 
uh, soul energy more seriously. Now I know you're on that mission. You've Saturn and Pluto in the 12th. Venus is now joining them. You've the North Node in your 6th house. So your mind is on examining, maybe uh, wanting to learn more about healthy eating, healthy food, healthy exercises, how to meditate, how to do this. A real moment here for you this month, Aquarius, is when you take up, take away the studying and the examining of this is the 10 best ways to meditate, 10 best ways to eat a healthy diet, you know, that over and over, and clean your mind by actively practicing, practicing that real deep self-love through taking time away. Now, I know for some of you, meditation isn't as easy as it is, uh, as it can be, you know. Um, for some people, they find it easy. Some people find it difficult. What I'd say to you is find that one thing again that you absolutely loved doing that you got lost in. It might be something like a hobby, even if it's something boring and repetitive. Cleaning the house, cleaning a garage, so whatever it might be, it's an activity that engages you so completely that it stops the spin, 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 spin of the mind. And this is a great month for that because there is some beauty in there. Beauty also in the healing arts, in the mystic arts, in movies, music, poetry, dance, abstract expressions of love, abstract creations of love. You could find yourself going on a date to an art museum or to some very deep and meaningful, maybe even spiritual place where they play music or even pray. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe all options. Now, you'll see the good news, February 4th, new moon uh, is in Aquarius. So this is the new you emerging, the one who's able to stand up from the inside and the outside and say, there's no question about it. I'm looking good. I really am. And it's got to be your first impression of me. I mean, how could it be any other way? You're trusting yourself more, Aquarius. You're being truer to what you need, to what you want. And you're beginning to play with that now. You're beginning to open that up and take it very seriously. And know, it's like a, a moment where you go, I know what was wrong all along. The thing that was wrong all along is that I stopped being me. It's time to get back to being me because my colors and my soul are unique to me and nobody gets to judge that, including me. My only task is to shine that and to express it and to offer it and to watch it grow and to nourish it. So there's a realization that it's you who takes yourself into your bright future. You, you do it. So now Mercury in Pisces. This is a moment, February 10th. Mercury goes into Pisces. Again, I want you to be cautious with your money. Don't get involved in people who are selling something that seems too good to be true, because more than likely, it will be too good to be true. <laughs> and you might lose money there. And you're building up your self-confidence and self-worth here, Aquarius, this month, very much so. You're stepping out of some shyness also too, uh, which might surprise a lot of people to know that Aquarius can be very shy at times, which is something that I find actually very, very nice about you. But I want you to be able to, as you're emerging as this real true version of yourself, to explore uh, your confidence growing, your sense of self-worth growing, and again, not falling for somebody who offers to come in and prop that up for you artificially in some way. The, the phrase for this month should be, if it sounds like it's a, a miracle, like it's too good to be true, this is such an, an incredible opportunity, then it probably is uh, and too good to be believed, okay? So just be cautious there, all right? Now, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Mars is going into Taurus in your fourth house. So here's something that I'm going to say. 
Mars is all passion, drive and energy going into the earthy things, sensuality, sexuality, anything that you can touch, feel, use your senses with. So Mars is absolutely ignited, ignited by this. So what some of you might be doing for Valentine's Day, for somebody special perhaps, is doing something at home, preparing food at home. And what I want you to do, Aquarius, if you can really trust me with this, is to prepare what you're doing a few days in advance and design it, how to cook it, the hours that needs cooking and the whole thing, almost to military precision. Because Mars, the, the military one, the martial one, will follow a plan. He will follow orders and he'll do it perfectly. What he won't do is a great job in a kitchen if he's left on his own with his high temper and his high energy and his not paying attention to details and absolutely losing track of time, forgetting to switch the water on, the oven on. Or so he will do that because he's always uh, jumping ahead. He, he's not quite in the moment in some senses. And also in the kitchen, you don't want Mars energy running rampant because he's the fire, the burny one, <laughs> the one that burns shit. And he's also the one who has sharp knives and weapons, the one that cuts shit. What I don't want is an unhealthy moment in the kitchen where things are burnt or accidentally chopped, okay? So, um, if you plan this with great, great military precision, precision you can make this an amazing thing. You, you can see Mars at his best, which is igniting something wonderful and putting the passion under it. Okay? And be cautious where you put those lovely candles <laughs> if you're creating a beautiful, you know, seductive place for Valentine's Day. Fire, Mars. Let run riot in the fourth house at home. Just again, just be cautious, right? Now, sun goes into Pisces, February 8th, and that is in your second house again. So, there's a moment here, two things. Your self-esteem is really beginning to flourish here towards the end of the month. You're getting it. And for some of you, you might begin to feel new bonds with other people. Maybe people that you've had that Valentine's date with. It could be the first real stirrings of feeling a connection, feeling a bond. It's very, very nice. Because it's a, with the energy in the 12th house, Venus there, she wants to make real true, true, true unconditional love bonds, karmic bonds in some way. And this could be the month for it. Um, also, in terms of your money, it gets a little bit healthier. Now, February 19th, there is a full moon in Virgo in the 8th house. If, <coughs> excuse me, if you have had uh, worries about seeing some money come back to you, taxes, investments, uh, money due back from a claim, money that you thought, it, oh my God, I have to jump through hoops for this, fill in document after document after document, when is the money coming? It seems that for many of you around February 19th, that could come back to you. Some tax money, payback money, some money that is just due, okay? A dividend of some sort. And, <coughs> excuse me, and for some of you too, this could mark a real moment where you finally get to release a bond with somebody, where you finally get to say, look, you go, you live your life. I'm over here living my life. Thank you for everything. Goodbye. So there could be a real separation where you're allowed to transform. And also remember, in the most loving, kind way with Venus in the 12th house, it also gives an opportunity for the other person to grow. There could have been a moment here, Aquarius, where you and another person were holding on to a connection that you, for both of you, let it go. Let it go. If it's not going into your future, and if it's not allowing both of you to grow, but you're still holding on, let it go. It's the most loving and kind thing you can both do for each other. Okay? So that's that. Now, Aquarius, we've only four cards. <laughs> for your birthday, the universe has only given you four. Now, wait, no, more. 
He's giving you another card there. And strength. Yeah, he's giving you strength. I know the universe is giving you strength for your birthday. I'm saying he. It could be she. I don't know. It could be both. Who cares? It's We just know that it's got the energy to give you what you need right now. So let's see. I'm going to choose your birthday cards now here, Aquarius. If you don't mind, if you allow me to do that. So we have that card. Investments. Some of you really, you've got investments, work investments, investing in something, investing your time, energy and effort into something. And of course the sun makes an appearance. You've two Leo cards here, by the way. We had the full moon, lunar eclipse in Leo in your relationship sector. I, I'm going to say this. I feel, f it's a strange thing because for some of you, I feel that there could be a moment where you try to repair a relationship, but then at the end of the month you realize that, okay, I gave it one last shot, and I don't know if it's going to be the right thing to do. Hmm, that just came to my mind. Anyway, let's keep going. Two more cards. The Chariot. So, you've got big cards here, Aquarius, for your birthday. And this is your last card for your birthday, for Valentine's. The universe ends up with its last message, the cup of love. See, I told you, I told you, it's all about love. We don't often talk about love, do we, Aquarius? But this month, it's all about love. Now, <coughs> excuse me, Aquarius, let's go over and see what your lovely birthday cards are showing there. So we begin with the tower, yeah. Felt like it was all going wrong. It felt like it was all collapsing around you. Your money, your relationships in particular. Your sense of self-esteem and self-worth. It was all, I know, we talk about this often, Aquarius. It's been going seemingly weird for a while. It's been lots of unexpected things, lots of things coming out of the shadows, surprise things, things that you almost always feel that you're blindsided by them. It's like, how did that happen? What, 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 what? But of course, you know, with Saturn and Pluto there, it's, they're trying to open you up to newer vistas in some way. That you have a broad view, Aquarius, you definitely do, but there's broader. And things are coming in out of the shadows, like coming in over your shoulder, and you're saying, I never saw that. And Saturn and Pluto are saying, that's the point. You're supposed to be seeing it. You're supposed to be stretching your view that you can see all these hidden things that we're throwing at you. That's the point of this test. Pluto wants you to be more empowered by having the ability to see further, see outside of some myopic view that perhaps has accumulated over the last few years, Aquarius. It doesn't suit you to be like that. So the universe and... Pluto and Saturn are saying, let's just throw things out of the dark, out of the shadows at Aquarius, uh, until they actually look up and realize that there's a huge, huge world out there that they're supposed to be focusing on. And I tell you this because when you're feeling like the tower, like something has ended, something has collapsed, it's a disaster, you feel, how can I... How can I come out of this? How can I return from this? I've, I've gotten to a point now that nothing is rebuildable here. I've lost something. The karma is trying constantly to say you're losing nothing. When you open up your vision, like we're trying to get you to do by throwing mysterious things at you to get your attention to look bigger, when you follow this karmic turn, you'll realize it's not a disaster at all. Those of you who follow me on Instagram know I posted something about the Tower card recently, and it's true. At first, what looks like it's all crashing down, oh my God, it's a disaster, a catastrophe. It's actually a moment where you're supposed to sit back, get a comfortable chair, get a glass of brandy, and say, down you go, bitch. Let that old structure fall. Let it go. And cheers. Really, because you've got to have that attitude now. You've got to let it fall. Because when you let it fall, new things 
are coming in the in its place and if it feels very difficult like this has been a hard thing that's happened then know that what's pushing up through the shoot that's coming up through is obviously very very strong because if it had the ability to make such a disaster then you know it's got a lot of force and power so trust that okay now this is a karmic card and we did have that big karmic lunar eclipse happening for you in your house of relationships and how you now no longer accept that you need other people's approval to be confident, to be proud of yourself, to live a life that you're proud of, to be the personification of somebody that you're proud of. You don't need anybody's permission. That was the wheel that turned. When that wheel turns though, it does, it does feel creaky and it feels like, oh my God, oh my God, where's it going? But it is taking you places and you can always be sure that it's taken you in the right direction. We may not approve of its methods, we may not like the journey, but it is bringing us to where we're supposed to be. Yeah. Now look at this big energy going into love. Now Venus in the 12th house, and then Mercury in Pisces, Sun in Pisces, Mars in Taurus, <coughs> excuse me, Lots of fire and passion and enthusiasm. To start again, being this more wiser love, spiritual person, very Neptunian style, and Neptune is in Pisces for you in the second house, of getting a greater sense of self-confidence when you light up your sense of self-love. Now, for some of you, you could be showing a great amount of kindness and compassion and real service to a water sign that's Pisces, very likely a Pisces, Cancer or Scorpio. You could be doing something very wonderful with them, very generous with them, very nice energy. And some of you for Valentine's could be really sparking it up with a water sign. If there's sun, moon or ascendant is in a water sign, it could be really happening. Now here's a card of celebration and victory beside the sun, mid-month, which is Valentine's. I wonder, are you doing something Aquarius that needs real celebration? Was that the worry in the first place with the lunar eclipse? You were worried about how other people might see what you're doing. Will they like it? Will they applaud it? Will they celebrate it? Will they this? Will they that? And there's a moment here where you are guaranteed some sort of celebration that people love what you're doing, they love who you're becoming, they love what you're growing into, they love how your life is beginning to unfold now that you are taking control of it, now that you're being braver, now that you are shining more, and now that you're not so worried about your old demons, which was other people's vision of me, other, how will people see me? In some cases, I'm going to say this, and I don't know why I'm going to say this, you have outgrown a sense of, now this, I hope this doesn't sound wrong, it's not meant to be an insult, but almost like a fake snobbery. You're not a snob Aquarius, anything but. But sometimes your aloofness, because you protect yourself, because you can be quite shy and guarded at times, <coughs> me, there can be an aloofness which in turn then can turn into a type of keep those people and peasants away from me. And, you know, it doesn't come from a bad place. It comes because you want to keep people's bullshit away from you. You want to keep people's criticism away from you. You don't want people to get too close for comfort in some way. And that's fake for you because underneath all of that, you are probably one of the most sincere signs. You were very genuine and very, very loving. And what what's happening here, I think, is that not that you're letting your guard down a bit, but more like a, you're releasing the need to guard yourself from other people. You're not going to open doors and letting anybody wander through your house. It's not like that. 
It's almost like, I don't, I don't care for that anymore. Who cares what they think? That's the energy I'm kind of feeling. So it's a kind of a, a snobbery that you had adopted. And again, I am not insulting you. How dare you insult me? It's my birthday season. How very dare you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. I'm not. I think you, I think you get that. But a success comes almost when you drop all of that. You're getting a success. Are you doing something? I'm just looking down here. You're doing something that's very, very personal to you. You're communicating something very personal. Maybe you're having a, a podcast. Or, I don't know why I said that. Or some, You're doing something where you're communicating a very true idea. And people are going to celebrate you. They're going to really enjoy it. And then you'll sit back and you say, well, would you look at that? All the blood, sweat and tears I put into getting other people to like me and all I had to do was be myself and they like me better. <sighs> okay. <laughs> now, after that success, it seems mid-month, there's an element here of you wanting to build on that. This is the card of beginning to see the fruit of something that you've planted in the past. And you're taking that and making it grow, grow, grow more. If it's a financial thing, maybe some money is coming to you, as I said earlier, and, and you want that to expand, you want it to grow. So if you get a little claim back or something, you might get a, a thousand euro, dollars, pounds, whatever, or more. There might be a real moment where you're thinking, I can double that. I can do something, invest that, or do something with, with that where it grows more. So your mind is on that. But in terms of feeling that you've conquered something here too, conquered something physically, if you've been suffering some ill health, there may be a little victory here for you, maybe, maybe I don't like to promise those type of things, but it could happen here. A victory where you feel more connected to your true self. Victory with money. A victory with having more control over how your finances grow. And um, with that, you want to get to work. You want to be focused and on it. When it comes to work, it's now all about going places. You're not happy, it seems, mid-month about having a random job or just turning up every day for work. You want to now say, I want to grow. I want to go further. And I'm prepared to put my head down and put the hard work in. And I'll do it. And you will. You most certainly will. Because again, another Leo card. Leo, Sun, Moon or Ascendant is very, very instrumental to, to something, to some su success for you. It seems they could be changing your mind, pointing you in the right direction, giving you a, a nudge. Now I know, as I said, the lunar eclipse in January has been doing that. But also it could be a physical Leo pointing you in the right direction and helping you in real practical, bright, optimistic ways to make your wishes come true, to build something in your life that is very satisfactory. You appreciate it, you admire it, you can sit back and say, look what I've done. This is my world. You're building on success, Aquarius, with something that you're doing, something you're communicating to other people, um, and it's good. Now, I can't ignore the fact that there could be love between you and a Leo sun, moon or ascendant, definitely because a Leo could feel like their presence makes all your dreams come true. <gasps> yes. And we come towards the end, Cancerian card. For some of you, there could be a Cancer too, a Cancerian. I did say there was an element of water here. Cancerians could be offering love or charging at you with poetry, music, drama, big declarations of passionate and wild uncontrollable emotions. They could be bringing that love to you and enjoy it, enjoy it, if that happens. But this card is also very much the card of controlling your emotions and finally mastering them. When you master your inner world, which is what the sun in the first house, Mercury in the first house, um, the new moon in the first house, that, that's what it wants to do, mastering and then healing energy, 12th house, 2nd house. 
master your emotions, master who you are on such a deep and powerful and true, I'm going to say it again, unconditional love for yourself. There may be a moment this month where you reconnect with yourself in a way that you haven't in years, Aquarius. And Sorry, Aquarius, I was just saying, you'll feel I've come home. I've mastered this. I've mastered my emotions. And now that all the old toxic emotions are gone, I'm ready for the universe to put its big, beautiful hand out and hand me that cup of mwah, love and healing and unconditional love. Aquarius, what gorgeous energy for your birthday month, my beautiful. I love it, I love it. Now, of course, those of you, you know by now what to do. If you want to get the real in-depth scoop, we deal with love, money, family, friends, business, the whole thing. You know to go to the Vimeo deep readings, the deep read, all linked down there below. So we get stuck into them. So come join me if you haven't seen the deep read before. And for those of you who know what to do, you, you know what to do by now. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that Aquarius. I'm very happy that you got such beautiful, beautiful cards for your birthday month. And I want you... I want you to enjoy every moment of this month and I want you to know that I'm sending you, as always, all my love and the biggest birthday Valentine's kiss ever. Mwah! My gorgeous, until next month, bye.